questions here for Coach Ariel? We have some on the team. I know we'll start here. Gina, yes. Well, you think just because you're with the AP, you get to go first? Alexa, you had your hand up first. You go first. <laughs> you know, um, for the fourth quarter, for this team to be held to three points, we heard Dawn in here before saying that she thinks this might be the best defense she's had. I'm curious if you thought that the product of South, what South Carolina was doing defensively or just things more so falling apart yeah. offensively. Um, there's, never, there's never one reason for anything that happens, actually. Um, so yes, the combination of uh, um, their defensive pressure in the fourth quarter and, and our inability to handle that pressure um, is basically the, the, the game, you know. Because I thought for I thought for 30 minutes we played we played exactly the way we wanted to play. You know, we knew you know we knew it wasn't going to be easy, but it's for sure. <clears throat> and for 30 minutes, I thought we did everything we, we set out to do. And then we just, we just ran out of gas. We just fell apart, you know. And, you know, as coaches, you know, we, we, we talked about it afterwards. You know, that's, that's you know, basically what, um, what, we need to, what we need to address as coaches. What, what about, you know, what happened that we can fix? What about what, what just happened we can't fix? You know, um, that fourth quarter. You know, not all those things that happen in the fourth quarter are fixable, but certainly a bunch of them are. Is the rebounding fixable? The rebounding is always fixable. That's always fixable. But I, I didn't. Um, <clears throat> I, I know the NCAA says you can have anything on the sidelines, um, including. They can, players can light up and have a cigar if they want. You got tobacco now on the sidelines if they want, something like that. Um, but I didn't have my phone to call the NCAA to see if I could put Jamal in. That would have addressed the rebounding problem. But I couldn't do that, so we were screwed. Coach, we have seemed to have a pretty good game through the best I've seen of this year. I mean, the last couple of years, I mean. Yeah. Defensively, she had the once or two blocks of charge. I mean, yeah. it seemed like she was more active than. Yeah. I could tell before the game started that Liv was going to play really well today. I just wish she had made a couple shots, you know, that she had taken a couple from the perimeter. I think that's the, that's the next thing that's left for, um, for Liv. And, you know, it's, um, it's our fourth game. And, and you're absolutely right. That, that was a tough assignment today for for our post players and as i said for 30 minutes i thought we 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 were really 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 good and then the last 10 minutes they were better they were better they were better than us defensively they were better than us offensively they were better than us rebounding the ball um so you know for 30 minutes we were better and then for 10 the 10 that mattered the most they were but I thought Liv was really, really good. I think she ran. You know, she needs help too, you know? And um, I don't think we got a lot of help for her. Um, I forget what it was. Maybe it was the start of the game. I don't know. Yeah, I think the first four minutes of the third quarter, the first five minutes were not good. That was not a good thing. We had some guys out there that really struggled. First five minutes that may have set the tone, but we hung in there for 30 minutes. They were just better. They're a better team than us right now. A little deeper, you know. They were the quicker to the ball. You know, made more shots from the perimeter. They were just a better team than us tonight. And you know, we got a long time before we go down there and play them again. But <clears throat> they were better. <clears throat> Gina, you just used those words. They're better than us right now, and there's a long way to go. There's 30 something games left. Yeah. Four months left. Yeah. How much do teams evolve over the course of a time like that? And how valuable was this experience for the first kind of building block for what you're trying to do? Yeah. Um, the next four months, the team you, you saw today, the next four, four months from now, 
it could be a completely different team. That's always a, every coach's hope and prayer that our team can keep changing every week and use every experience to build on. Yes, that's the that's the goal, and that's generally you know how the how the season goes. This team, this team's got some work to do. If that if that's going to happen, um, we're, um, we're we're going to have to we're going to have to work really really hard for that to happen. It's not going to come easy for this team. It's not going to come easy. We, you know, right now the coaches have to do too much of the work. We need some of the players to help us do some of the work. And hopefully, you know, something like today lets the players see that we can't be out on the floor with them when it's when it's happening. You know, we need. So hopefully, having seen that is way different than having experienced that in practice. It would be terrible if that if the first time we experienced something like today would be in February, because then there may not be enough time between February and the NCAA tournament. But that's why you play these games in November. I don't think Dawn left here for anything like we just won a national championship. And we're not leaving here thinking we have no chance to win it. You know? They probably left here thinking, you know, we just beat a really good team. So we must be really good. And shit, they are. And we just, you know, we're leaving here going, we just lost to a really good team. And we did. Other than that, and I, as I said, I liked 30, 30 minutes of what we did, I thought was great. You know, I don't know whether we got tired. Uh, our transition game was great in the first half. You know, when we get out in the open floor, you know. But right now, our half court offense isn't um, isn't very good. Again, you know, it's, it's early, but it's not very good. It's not very good. So, you know, you, you weren't able to. You chose not to go to AZ too often. Was that just a product of needing particular players to guard? particular players, or was it a defensive thing? Well, or? every time she came in the game, they went out of their way to make sure they just went right at her. Yeah. And, you know, we tried to play a defense that could help protect that, but we couldn't. And that's not okay if on the other end, you know, like yesterday, you know, you're going to, you know, move without the ball, you know, and be tough and, you know, and, and again, when we leave, we got to figure out ways to get her open more. That's, that's my job, find ways to get her open. Uh, yeah, Coach Oriama, this is Michelle from ESPN. Um, I, was, I, I know Paige um, grades herself pretty hard on games. I'm wondering if you could evaluate her in this game, and, and what do you think are the things that she'll take away from it? Um, well, I don't think she was any good today, to be honest with you. I, I thought the first half – there were a lot of great moments that she had, but I think for the entire second half, I don't think she was much of a factor. And I don't know whether she just got tired, she worn down, you know. Um, but it wasn't the same page that we're used to seeing. And some of that obviously comes from uh, we need another guard out there that can make sh outside shots. We need somebody else that can that can knock out that knock in shots that we can go to and, um, you know, um, and she just didn't get enough help. You know, you're really good when the other players around you are really good. And today, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think we were, I don't think we were at all. Hey, Gino, uh, I wanted to ask you about Boston and if um, she presents something different maybe than she did last February, if she's a different player and if, if uh, you know, counteracting what she does is something that you can or, or can't fix or have to attack a different way when you play them again. Um, I don't think it's any a different 
impact than she had last year. I think they're better around her. I think they, they have more, more weapons and more places to go to um, that allows her to, you know, it frees her up to do more things. But I don't, I don't, I don't think there's, you know, that she does anything different. She's still the same, you know, low post scorer, and she's still, you know, she's. I think she's a, she's shooting the ball better from the perimeter. Uh, can we counteract that? You, you can. Um, our post players would have to make some shots from the perimeter. In terms of defending her, I thought we defended it pretty well in the first half. <coughs> but you have to stick. You have to have a pretty good game plan to to, to beat South Carolina, and, and we had a really good game plan, and we executed it great. The players were great, and then we just, you know, we got worn down. Hey, Coach, this is Jackie Powell from Bleacher Report. Um, I'm curious as to what you believe caused the turnovers this afternoon and how much of that is has a relation to maybe a lack of mental focus and toughness in that second half. Um, mental focus, uh, some of it, yes. Some, some were kind of mindless. Uh, so yeah, some of that obviously was responsible, um, but um, most of the time turnovers are caused by the other team. So yeah, half of that and half of the other team. We could be just as dumb against another team and we wouldn't have turned it over. So I think South Carolina had a lot to do with that. And we need, you know, obviously we need to take care of the ball better. Gino, it's Howard Megdell. Um, you talked about rebounding being fixable, uh, rebounding being fixable. This also, though, was a team that took away your three point shot in a way. No one really has this year. You know, you guys have averaged 20 plus or you've gotten 20 plus three attempts in every other game this year. You, you, you made only three, but you took only eight. I'm wondering in, how do you go about fixing that? And what is South Carolina doing that leads to you not even getting those opportunities you normally do from three? Well, a lot of a lot of really good three point opportunities come when uh, various ways, obviously, you know, they come in transition a lot. Um, and in the past years that we've had a lot of success against South Carolina, that's when you get a lot of your threes before they get a chance to set their defense. So that's one way to get them. Uh, another way is your post players have to be a little more of a threat. Another way you get them is you got to move and become better screeners. So there's a lot of ways that you can get more threes. And what South Carolina did was they they took away and weren't worried about anything that we might do inside. They weren't worried about that. You know, um, it was all about, you know, we were willing to give up threes. They were determined not to give up threes. So how many did they make? Five. So we made three. So we wanted to give up threes. They only made five. We wanted to get 20 threes. We only got eight. So we accomplished our job defensively, but not offensively. Thank you, Gina. Uh, you know, this was one of the games where maybe Aubrey could have helped yeah. healthy. Um, do you have any update on her? We're, we're hoping that you know, she can start full practice next week sometime and then see where it goes from there. But yeah, this would have been a game where Aubrey could have helped big time. Still the high ankle sprain? Oh, I don't even know anymore. You have to go to medical school to check up on some of all the crazy stuff the kids had today. You gotta be a doctor in psychology and a, doc and a medical doctor to coach today. 
Yeah, and a witch doctor, too. Don't, I, let me throw that in. <laughs> let me throw that in. Uh, I know you said uh, you never know what kids are thinking or why or whatever, but, <laughs> but if you took the temperature of, of the locker room, like how do you feel like your, your team comes away feeling about itself from this experience? This was a high-profile game. Yeah. Do they overanalyze, like, oh, boy, we just lost a huge one, or do they walk out of here saying, we're going to be fine? Well, I, don't, I, I, I think you walk out with half and half. Like, for half, we were great. For half, we were lousy. Mm -hmm. So you, if you walk out thinking, we're lousy, that's not right. If you walk out thinking, we're gonna, everything's fine, that's not right. <laughs> so it's somewhere in between, you know? Um, but at the end, you know, the object is to win the game, and we didn't win. So that's a bad thing. But this is a very stubborn group of players, which I don't understand. Like, I've coached some of the most iconic players ever played college basketball, and they weren't stubborn. And now I got guys that can barely play a lick, and they're stubborn as shit. It's welcome to 2021, right? It's like uh, coaching the Holy Trinity. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. What are you doing tomorrow? Uh, I'm playing golf tomorrow. Um, and uh, what else am I doing? I'm going to find out where the sharks are and try to go swim in there. Other than that, I'm going to enjoy the day. Sure, um, like both players' thoughts, if possible, just to, how you guys feel coming out of this experience, three high-level basketball games early in the season with a long way to go is probably very valuable. Um, obviously, just not the outcome you wanted today, though. Uh, definitely not the outcome that we wanted, but I'm definitely going to take this game as a learning point. Um, it was – we had a really good first half. Um, just the fourth quarter really just killed us. Um, but we have to really – make that emphasis in practice um, to make sure we're having good practices throughout the whole however many hours it is. Um, but definitely a, a great learning lesson for us today. Uh, yeah, I'd piggyback on what she said. Um, obviously, we have some things to clean up, but this is a learning curve for us. Um, I feel like we're going to grow a lot as a team from this game moving forward. So. To be honest, they punched us, and we we fell. We didn't punch back. Um, we had a heck of a first half. Things were flowing offensively and defensively. And really, it was just the fourth quarter, really. Um, and they had some big shots, um, and we, we couldn't get it going offensively. Um, yeah, that's all I can say, for real. Yeah, I think in the fourth quarter, um, especially, we just couldn't really get in the flow offensively. Yeah. It was just difficult for us. Um, but like I said before, we're going to take that as a learning point, learning lesson, and just try to learn and obviously watch film and just try to see, you know, it was, we, we knew what we we're doing, um, but we just couldn't really get into it. So. Hey all, this is uh, Jackie Powell, Bleacher Report. Um, I'm curious from both of you, uh, what do you think caused the turnovers this afternoon and how much of that maybe has a relation to a lack of mental focus and toughness in the second half? Oh, wow. We all 
I didn't even realize we had all of us had that many turnovers. Did you? No, not until not that many. I didn't know we had 19 as a team. But um, honestly, just not being as smart as we should have been. Um, Yeah. Not taking care of the ball at certain times. Yeah. Yeah. It's a difficult question to answer. I mean, their defense, I mean, they were very aggressive, um, obviously. And we just, we weren't making the right reads, the right plays at the right time. Really, I think it was turnovers from us just making stupid and dumb mistakes. They, they were playing great defense, but it was... It was us turning it over. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, Coach was saying that rebounding, which you guys, I guess, I don't know, off the top of my head, minus 17 on the glass, um, is fixable. And I know you guys as guards, maybe it's less of a focus a little bit, but um, what can you kind of take away from how that can kind of develop? Or what makes that fixable? Is it just effort? Or is there anything to do schematically differently to control the glass more? I think there's another going to be another point in practice. Um, our bigs did a really good job, especially the starting the game, boxing their bigger players out. So I think it, as guards, it is our job to get in there and rebound if they're going to box their main rebounders out. So it's our job to get in there, get the rebound if they're putting in all the work, you know, boxing out their best defend, their best uh, rebounders. How are you guys going to spend tomorrow? I'm just taking it one hour at a time, yeah. for real. I don't even know what we do in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you guys, it's rare when you come to this in November. Is this a chance for you guys to sort of, okay, here's what we need to work on to get better when we play something, we can play them again in a few months to get better and ready for the games that matter, so to speak, in March? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we'd much rather, you know, have this ill in November than later in the season in March. Um, so, again, we're just going to, take it and learn from it and that's really all that we can do and we're going to see them again so yeah we go to their place mm -hmm. yeah.